the book of Luke, and we're going to start reading in verse number 1. Luke, Luke chapter 1 and verse number 26. We're going to start reading. If you haven't looked in your New Testament in a while, it's Matthew, Mark, and the next one is Luke. Luke chapter 1. We're going to start reading in verse number 26. Thank you, Sister Leatherwood and Brother John, for working on our songs and our scriptures ahead of time. It's always a blessing, man. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for the wonderful music. We, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And brother and sister Leatherwood yes. took down the Christmas tree. Man, it was a lot of other things too. God bless you all. It, isn't it wonderful to come to the church and the church has been cleaned? Yes. Thank you. Every family that takes time. Amen. That don't come easy, but it comes every week. And we thank you. We thank you. Some of you may want to be part of that. If you're not, it's, it's a blessing. I growed up cleaning the church myself, and it, I've, never, I've never hated or nothing. It was part of our life. We thought that's the only way you could, it's this way it's supposed to be. It's a precious thing. The only thing I struggled with was cleaning the toilets. <laughs> Especially, okay, okay, I can tell you, you can't stand it. Okay, here we go. Here we are in Luke chapter 1 and verse number 26. We're going to start reading. We'll read down through about verse number 41. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused. This word in our language would be engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail! Thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went to the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Ghost. Woo. Another passage of scripture in Psalm 78 and verse number 37. Psalm chapter 78 and verse number 37. For their heart was not right with him, neither 
were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned their back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. One more verse. I'd like for us to look at this in Job chapter 42 and verse number 2. Then we'll have prayer together. I know that thou canst do how much? Every thing, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Lord, we bow in your presence. We thank you. We thank you so much for your word. Lord, when we glean here the excellency of your power and just look at where we come from and what you're doing and what you've done and what you're going to do, Lord, please open our spirits up and our hearts and our minds to your presence and your power. And we thank you for this now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. This has been several years ago, but Paisley was taking her a shower and we could hear her in there. And she was singing, I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad, Jesus. It, isn't that beautiful for just to be responding to the things of the Lord? It's out there. Just, nobody, nobody knows what it's all about. It's just something coming from the inside out. In our walk with Christ, and I want, I want to talk to you about this, what happened in Psalm 78 and verse number 41. Yea, they turned back, they tempted God, and look at this word, and limited the Holy One. Of Israel. I want to talk to you just a little bit about why limit God? Why limit God? When you look at God from Genesis to Revelations, friends, no human spell has ever stopped him. He's been God from the beginning, and as he closes it out, he's still King of Kings, Lord of Lords, God of Gods. And so we're, we're caught in this interim period of where our belief system can live and still have uh, be functional. That, that's kind of where we try to live at. But wh why put a limit on what God can do? There is nothing impossible with the God that we're serving. And, and so to limit the Holy One of Israel, man, where, where can that come from? And the only thing that stops God is unbelief. And so constantly we, we've got to deal with that in our own walk and say, well, Lord, I want to trust you for it. And then wait upon the Lord and watch it come to pass. Our faithfulness and trusting him is what, what makes the difference. There's an old song we used to sing. It says, my God can do what? Anything. My God can do anything, anything, anything. My God can do anything. He made this earth in all its fullness and all that time shall bring. My God can do, can do. Anything. Now, you've got to make a decision if you're going to be on the can-dos or the can't-dos. And every day you live, you kind of got to look life over and say, well, where do we go from here? Is it can-do or can't-do? But our walk, if we, if, we can, if we can answer the question, why limit God? If you look at the Bible, if you really look at Scripture, the scriptural God, you will say, you'll have to say with God that nothing is impossible with the God that we serve. Now, about the virgin birth, I know it's a Christmas story, but it's also a passage in the Bible that gives us great insight into the presence and the power of the Lord. And one thing that's spoken here in verse number 34 is the questions that come to our mind. Here's this young maiden, never been married, only betrothed to Joseph, She's living out her last months and weeks before they go to the wedding. And the angel Gabriel steps in and, and talks to her and greets her from God Almighty and tells her what's fixing to happen. And the question is, 
I, I, I can't blame her for asking. But look what the question is. How, this is verse 34, how shall this be seeing I know not a man? She's not saying it can't happen, but she says, I have, I have never been married. I'm just in, in the throes of that happening. How, how can this come to pass? And there's not a logical answer given. Not one that you can bring down and say, well, this is the way it happened. And they have, I mean, everything about the virgin birth is being checked out in today's economy. They're looking it over every way upside down and they're, they're, they're coming out with the deal that there's no way it's ever happened in a million years. And of course, they're right without the miracle working power of God. And friends, if you believe that a virgin actually had the Son of God, you must believe that with God there is nothing that is impossible. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. How can these things be said? Not known, no man. Look, look at the answer that's given, and you cannot put or you cannot process this in the human mind. Here's the angel. He answered and said unto her, He starts with, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the, ha of the highest shall overshadow thee. I was talking to you a little bit this morning about the Lord just scraping up a little dirt, making a man out of it. And then breathing. Like, how, how can we believe that if we don't believe that God can do anything? How can he put a man to sleep without any of the, I don't know, what are the, what are the, where's, where's the, what do they put the people to sleep with? Ether? Drugs. Drugs? Without a shot in his vein. He puts this man to sleep. This was the first man. And while he's got him down, he takes a rib out and builds a woman out of it. Is that, is that logical? <laughs> I mean, logic, you, you can't put logic on God. And so what we're thinking about, when we're thinking of praying, we're praying for the impossible. And we can have it because God is a God of impossibilities. Woo! Man! What, what a powerful God we serve. And so in this answer, he says, this is, this is nothing about any, anything about sex or nothing. This is just the power of God overshadowing a little virgin woman that's bringing prophecy to pass that's 4,000 years old. Woo! Well, he's got a good remembrance, doesn't he? Wow! Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So when you think about limiting God... And we do it in, what happens is we try to do it with a rational thought. Here's the first thought I want you to think about, that there is no rational answer needed or given. If God said it, all we've got to do is get a hold of it and believe it. Yes. Now, whenever we, Con and I was just young Christians, there was a saying going through that if God said it, I believe it. That makes it so. But the answer come back right after that. If God said it, you don't have to believe it. It's so anyway. That's the truth. Believe it or, or not believe it does not change the power of God to manifest itself in people's lives. You've been praying for people for years, a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, a husband, whatever, a, a friend, a neighbor that's... Uh, plumb, wild. Listen, there is nothing that God can't do. Don't throw the towel in. Uh, what about a sickness? Listen, as long as their body's on this earth, they can be healed. And if they don't get it here, they're going to get it over yonder. But don't, don't limit God. He can do any thing. You're talking about financial difficulty? Uh, you may see no way out. And I've been there so many times. I just quit even thinking about it. To live in the joy of knowing that God's going to see me through. Yeah, instead of, of wondering, I just wonder how we're going to make it next week. Look, the devil would love to keep you there. But friends, if, if, if you just leave your hands in the hands of God, you can say, Woo! we're going to make it. Don't be crazy. But I mean, let God be God in your life. It's such a joy and a glorious thing to allow the Lord. We don't have to have a rational answer. Just leave it in the hands of God. In Job chapter 3 and verse number 3, I'm sorry, John 
St. John chapter 3 and verse number 3, Nicodemus comes to Christ and the Lord talks to him, but he does not give him a rational answer that, that can be put back in a little box that this is the way you do it. Jesus answered said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What does born again mean to Nicodemus? All he's ever heard is the law of Moses. Nicodemus said unto him, how? Here's the question. How can a man be born when he is old? And he's going back to the only thing that he knows. Just like she said, I haven't seen a man. He said, can I go back to my mother's womb? He's, he's trying. He's not trying to be smart. He's trying to comprehend born, born again. The only birth he's ever known about or ever heard about in his life is mothers bearing children. How can I be born again? That is so far out there for him to get hold of. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say to thee, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So he's, he's raising us up. He's using birth to say a child when it's born, what is it? Flesh. Um, it's flesh. It's beautiful. It's a brand new start for that, for that life. And look what he's saying. For, he's saying in the spiritual realm that you come to Christ and you're born. And look at, look at the glory of the miracle of the birth of Christ in our life. Not, not his birth, but our birth with him. So the miraculous is being, is being spoken here through Christ. Verse number seven says, <clears throat> Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Wow, that newness has got to come or there it erases everything about our walk with Christ. So it does not have to be rational. You can't just figure out, well, this is the way we're going to do it. And, and we take 20 steps and this, when we get to the 20 step, it's going to finally come. Friends, salvation is an instantaneous action that starts our walk with Christ. It is not a finished product until we reach the portals of glory. That's another miracle about salvation. Yes. The writer says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 10, uh, who, speaking of Jesus, who hath delivered us from so great a darkness, that's past tense, and doeth deliver, that's present, in whom we believe he will. Yes. yes deliver us. So he said, we're saved. We're being saved and we're and we're going to be saved. I don't know how, but every day the Lord is walking with us, bringing us up to date, helping that born again experience be lived out through our walk. You don't have to get old in Jesus. I'm not talking about your age. I'm talking about your spiritual walk. It don't have to drain down until your chin is sagging and there's tears in your coffee, friends. There should be, I don't care if you're 120, there should be joy in your heart. Yeah. Woo! Daddy went to see an old gentleman, used to be in our church there, First Assembly. His name was Bruton. What was his first name, Mama? John. John Bruton. <clears throat> And uh, Daddy talked to him. He, he's in his 90s then. And he died when he was about, I don't know, like 96 or 70 years way up in years. Now he's down at Weatherford in an old folks' home. Precious old gentleman, man. Daddy walked in there and he said, uh, he talked to him. It, it, of course, he didn't know that Dad was coming. He said, hey, Brother Bruton. Boy, I mean, you could hear him through that whole deal. He was so happy to see Daddy. And, and he said, I want to ask you a question. He said, can you still sing? And whenever, whenever he was back in his 50s and 60s, you know, back there in, in our church, whenever they'd come through, he'd always sing, Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. Anyway, boy, I mean, the second that daddy, I mean, not a tooth in his head, boy. His little old body's aged up, but his joy is right up to here. He asked, they said, Brother John Bruton, can, can you still sing? He, he said, he said daddy, daddy said, it sounded like they put three mics on him. He said, I mean, that whole facility began to just do like this with, oh, to God's unchanging hand. <laughs> oh, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. And he sang the verses. Life is filled with 
with transitions, nor of earth can drag me down. Build your hopes on things eternal and old. I mean, he's getting down. Holy God's unchanging. What's wrong with him? That, that victory still, yeah, his little old body, I mean, he's way down. But whoa, the joy of the Lord is in his heart. Why limit the God of Israel with your age? Yeah, young or old, we should be up and about the master's business, strong for the Lord in Romans. Uh, so the miraculous birth, it goes beyond man. You can never institutionalize the new birth. You cannot get enough institution to save people, friends. I don't care if you build a church on every corner. You can call them anything you want to call them. I run into one down in Arkansas. I had never seen this before. Broadway Baptist. <laughs> so, I thought, them folks ain't never read the seventh chapter. <laughs> Help me now. What about the seventh chapter of Matthew? Was says, straight is the way and narrow is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Said, Don't name my church that. <laughs> no. I seen, I seen another one. Second, <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, all right. Anyway, I'm just thinking. You can't. You cannot rationalize Christianity. You can institutionalize it. You can go to every college on the face of the earth and still not know this Jesus. No, we must. We must recognize it is a miracle. If you are saved, you have felt and sensed and known the miracle working power of God. And that miracle should still be lively in your spirit that I'm born again only by the shed blood of Jesus. In Romans chapter 4 and verse number 20 and 21 he's talking about Abraham here. He staggered not the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform it. Woo! Man, what grand hope. I mean, when you look at Abraham's wife, she's 90, and Abraham is 100 years old, and the Lord says, you're going to have your first child with Sarai. I've changed her name to Sarah. She's going to be the mother of, yeah. And he staggered not the problem. You talk about holding on to God's unchanging hand, <laughs> building his hopes on things eternal. Woo! Glory. It happened, and it happened because he, he recognized the rational answer will never say that Sarah is going to have a child. She even backed up a little bit from it and said, she laughed and said, she didn't say it out loud, she didn't say it in her heart. She didn't think God could hear it in your heart. Shall Abraham? <laughs> yeah. And Sarah? No. And she said, Lord, I, I really didn't laugh. He said, yeah, you laughed. <laughs> but you're still going to have a child. And his name is going to be Isaac. And they had a little girl. No. No. The miracle really happened. Yes, nine months later, a 90-year-old woman, whoo, comes home with a baby boy, and his name was Isaac. Yes. Man, I was preaching like crazy in the home there on, uh, on 37th Street one day. Everybody in there, you know, had some age on them, so I thought I was going to get down. I mean, look what happened. <laughs> Look what happened to Abraham and Sarah. They were up in year, but look what God had done for them. One of the ladies, she come over there. She was our piano player. She said, Brother Danny, I was a Sunday school teacher X amount of years. I mean, she's, you know, up in her years. She said, there ain't no place in the Bible any 90-year-old woman ever had a baby. <laughs> but guess what? You cannot rationalize what God can do. Whoa, anything is possible with him. Woo. So why, why limit God? 
There's a song that says, He's risen in me, He's risen in me. The Lord of glory has risen in me. Oh, praise the Lord. He's risen in me. And how can that happen? It's, sim it's simplified in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. We'll look at the scripture. That if thou shalt confess with what? Thy mouth. thy mouth. And believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confess confession is made unto salvation. Look on down to verse 12. I love this part. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. This miracle of salvation. The door is open from the smallest child that, that recognizes they have need of Christ to whoever from that out there. The door is open to them. So no rational answer need be given or was given except the power of God and the miracle working power. So don't limit God. The second thing about this passage of Scripture, Luke chapter 1, 26 to 41, in verse number 35, there's something said here <clears throat> that spans the distance of 4,000 years of tradition that's being broken by what's spoken right here in verse number 35. And the angel answered her and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that, look at this word, that what? Holy. That holy thing. In 4,000 years, no holy thing has been born. Mm -mm. If you go to Psalms 51 and verse number, I believe it's verse number 5. Look, look, look there just a minute. Psalm, yeah. David says what happens when people are born. Behold, I was shapen. In iniquity, does that sound like holy? And in sin did my mother conceive me. This is the natural man being born into this world. But whenever Jesus Christ was born, he broke the tradition that was for thousand years old and fulfilled the prophecy of Genesis that says one of these days a man is coming that's going to stay up. I know I was talking to you about this this morning but I just couldn't get away from it. That there's going to be a man born of a woman that steps on the head of the devil. Woo! 4,000 years that, that comes to pass. God has got a powerful memory and so we need to recognize why limit God when that kind of stuff is available for us in just one chapter of Luke chapter 1. Whoa. Therefore that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. What a miracle. Holy means of God. Sinless. The rest of mankind is, is seen here in this passage of Scripture in Psalm 51 and verse number 5. Look at the writer in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 12. Therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Right here is where the miracle happens. It's when you recognize that what's leading me to believe this is the Spirit of God. He spoke it into my heart. Who, who can build a boat that's longer than a football field? and three stories high and get all the animals to come and jump in <laughs> just before the flood comes. Preach truth for 120 years with no takers except for his own three sons and their wives and still hear the voice of God that says, Noah, today is the day to enter the ark. Can you imagine the people that lined up to watch the craziness of this. Yeah. They go in and the Bible says, the Lord shut the door. Buddy, I just want to tell you, he didn't only shut them in, but he shut the entire rest of the world out. You know why? They could not believe in the miracle power of God. And where we live today in this nation, they have taken the miracle of salvation out. It's, it's, it's said 
You sign the church roll. We'll put you in the baptistry. You can shake the preacher's hand. We'll take you back and tell you that this is how you can be good. Friends, nothing short of the miracle working power of God can bring salvation to your life. And the only way it can stay there is just if you recognize this as the power of God that's keeping you every day that actually 4,000 years of humanity that was born into sin now has found birth by a virgin, the Son of God. And even the Bible says that holy thing that shall come forth of thee shall be called the Son of God. Woo! Hallelujah! So here in, verse, in this verse, they that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Look at this next verse. For ye have not received the spirit of, look at this word. You know what unbelief is? Unbelief equals bondage. You have not received the spirit of bondage. Again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba Father. Lord, if you can save me, you can do anything. There's no miracle greater than the salvation of mankind. That was bought with the blood of Jesus. Don't say, well, I don't know if he can do that. Friends, let me, don't limit God. Believe God to the uttermost. Look at this next verse, verse number 16. The spirit itself bears witness with what? With our spirit that we are the children of God. You know why Sister Cheryl feels better today? It wasn't because she felt good when she started, but she faithed good. That's right. Yes, she faithed it. That's our hope right there. Sister Jean was telling me, I'm over it. I'm coming to church. I'm going to get by. Amen. And almost everybody in our church has been sick some two or three times. But we ain't giving up now. No, 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 no. Ain't giving up now. No. Why? If Jesus can be born from a virgin and 4,000 years of sinful man is stopped in his tracks by the Holy One that's been birthed upon this earth and called Jesus. Wow. Verse 17, look what it says. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. Friends, your life can bring honor to God. Here, here's the victory of our walk in Christ that we supernaturally get to bring life to others through Christ. Paul says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 24, and they that are Christ have done something. They crunched. They crucified. They killed. Brother John was using that word this morning, mortified. <laughs> yeah, that means kill. The flesh with the affections and the lust. Here is why miraculous power lives. It's because every day you have opportunity to go back and guess what? If you love Jesus and that miracle working power in your life, you walk past that stuff into the glory of God helping in our walk and believe in God to make the difference in our life. In Romans chapter 6 and verse number 6, <clears throat> knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. So we're facing, as we face Christ, we're facing the substitutional work of the cross. His burial and his bodily resurrection. He actually was killed. He actually was buried. He was dead three days. And the third day up from the grave he arose. Friends, everything about God is supernatural and it's powerful and it's ours. It's ours for the taking. And so we've talked to you about it's not a rational answer. 4,000 of, of tradition has been broken by the Holy One called Jesus. And thirdly, there is no limit to His kingdom. This is all in this Luke, this passage of Luke. If you, if you go back to the 33rd verse of Luke, chapter 1. Especially where we're living in today's economy, it just makes me so happy. He shall reign over the house of Jacob. That's, that's going to be Israel. And look at these next words. And of his kingdom, this is before he was born. This is the prophecy. Of his kingdom, there shall be what? No end. No 
in. I was preaching in the jail today, man, I thought, I thought they was going to all get saved. <laughs> I was working on them. <laughs> Talking to them about Jesus, and I said, now this, this, this what if you just take, because they all have trouble with the uh, language. They're not the only ones, there's folks, other folks outside, you don't have to be in jail to have trouble with language. <clears throat> anyway, I said, now just think about this, how come that the devil we was talking about the power of the name of Jesus, how he changes lives. I said, I said, how come the devil, whenever he uses, whenever he gets you to cuss, that he uses God's name and uses the name of Jesus? Why doesn't, it, why doesn't, it, why doesn't he use, why doesn't he say Buddha and use the word? Or why doesn't he say Islam and use the word? I was going, you know. <laughs> well, anyway, we had, we had a sweet time of prayer. And uh, they was turning the guys back out. And this one guy, he said, you're, you're, you're judging, you're judgmental. And I thought he was talking about sin. I said, well, the Bible says what we are and I ain't, I ain't. And there's a reason for us to, to look our life over. And that the, I was talking to him about the tree. He said, either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree evil and its fruit evil. No in between in the eyes of God. You're either straight or crooked. And I thought, well, that's where he's going. He said, no, I'm talking about Buddha. I said, what? Yeah. The Bible doesn't say that of Buddha's end there shall be no end. No. But it says of his end, that holy one, that one called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And so all the way over there, I'm talking to him because they took him out of one tank and put him in another because uh, we, I could just have to preach to him one time. So they're getting them all out. Anyway, uh, they, they put him back in his tank and all the time he's talking, going across there. He said, you're not right about Buddha. So I said, oh, I said, well, tell me. He said, it's okay to worship Buddha and worship God. He's just part of the way to get there. Friends, let, let me tell you, this is not a new way. This, the devil's been pinching this penny for years and years, and he's still a liar. And I said, well, have you ever read commandment number one of the Ten Commandments? He looked at me like, hey, man, what are you talking about? I said, here it is. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. And he said, Buddha is not a God. I said, oh, I know that, but I just want to tell you something. You don't want to pray to Buddha, the God. You don't want to bow down to him. You don't want to feed him donuts or money. Amen. Help me now. Amen. Buddha is dead. He's gone. He's no more. But Jesus is living. And there ain't no other name among men spoken other than the name of Jesus that brings life. And he's, I'm being hard on Buddha, friends. Buddha ain't never been alive. He's dead. He's a figment of your imagination. He said, you need to read up over him. <laughs> oh, no. I'm thinking all the time he's talking, I'm thinking about chapter or, or the second commandment. Thou shalt have no graven images before you. <laughs> How can you pray to a, a Humpty Dumpty? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. No. We got something better than that. We're talking about this miraculous Jesus that was born of a virgin that stopped 4,000 years of sin and lived 33 and a half years on this earth and never sinned and bought for all mankind the hope of eternity through the blood he shed on the cross of Calvary and bodily resurrected out of a real tomb. Woo! Buddha can't die because he never lived. But Jesus lives. And the Bible makes a declaration in this 33rd verse of Luke chapter 1. He shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Woo! Nothing else speaks of eternal things like Christ does. And he speaks those things for us. 
In Colossians chapter 1 and verse number, let's see, verse number 12. Here the writer, which is Paul, to the church at Colossae. Giving thanks unto the Father which made us meet to be partakers. Partakers of Buddha or Islam or... No, no. No, he zeroed it down to one thing. That's what the guy was angry about. That I had zeroed all the other small letter G-O-D-S's out. They're gone. They're no more. They never had life. But we're talking about this one that does have life. Made me to be partakers. He's talking about us. Of the inheritance of the saints in light. Woo! Look at the next verse. We're talking about his kingdom that has no end. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, this is talking about God, and hath translated us where? Into the kingdom of His dear Son. Friends, if His kingdom has no end, that's why we have the hope of eternal life. Our kingdom, through John 3, 16, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have what? Ever. Ever. Lasting. Life. Mordecai looks at Esther. She said, man, I can't go into the king. If I go to the king and he don't like me, if he don't stand at the scepter, they're going to kill me. Mordecai believes that it could be a miracle. The Jews have been zeroed out by a wicked man called Haman. And at the right day, they're going to be killed. Everyone and their stuff is going to be taken. Everywhere that they know there's a Jew, they're going down. You go anywhere besides Texas and they know where you come from. They say, we can tell by your voice. <laughs> yeah. They know it. And so they knew the Jews all over, all over the realm of the Persian government. They understood the Jews. And they was going to kill every one of them. But something, Mordecai says, this is, this is his play toward Esther. This is in Esther chapter 4, verse number 14. She said, I can't go in, but he, he gives her this spill. Here it is. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. I don't know if that bothers you or not, but friends, I'm just not satisfied to let somebody else do what God called me to do. I can't do it all. None of us can. But don't you want to do your part? I was talking to a gentleman this other day, and he said, I have never thought about somebody else. I'm just trying to get in myself. Well, friends, let me tell you, you can grow past that. It's good, it's good to look your own life over, make sure you're right with God, but the next step is get somebody in by the hand and bring them into the things of the Lord. Amen. Bring them in, like Chelsea's talking about. Man, got saved, got baptized, that boy, woo, what joy. And her grandmama uh, said, well, maybe it's time for me to go to church and wear me out. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's, that's the glory. Not, not just lim don't limit his kingdom. His kingdom is forever. So Mordecai tells her here, he says, but thou and thy father's house, if you don't do something, thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. That's going to include Mordecai. They're fixing to kill him anyway. That's what, that was the deal. They done built a, yeah, a gallows farm. And who knoweth, and here, here friends is where we're living, who knoweth whether thou art come to this kingdom or to the kingdom for such a time as this. Friends, we can throw it all out and say, well, I guess God's done with me. Or we can say, what if God, in my impoverished state, I'm not talking about money. What if God wants to use me to touch this world? Wow. Wherever I am, if I'm fixing flats, or if I'm, yeah, wherever, Lord, wherever I'm, if I'm in the oil field, or the ranching, or farming, or whatever's going on, working for the county, what if God wants to take you, Abel, and say, who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this, that right where you're going, God's going to be there and touch your life. Of all the places you, I know you can't believe it, but of all the places to touch somebody, I was at a sale several years ago, yeah, at an auction, a farm auction. Yeah, you can't believe I went there, but... Uh, at that auction was the guy that owned all the equipment. He had welders and all kinds of pipe. I mean, it took probably four or five hours to sell all this stuff. It was crazy. He had, he had and, and his stuff was good. He had good stuff, a lot of good stuff. And uh, 
equipment, tractors, all, all kinds of things. And anyway, he was riding a horse. When we got there and started, he just rode from each bunch of stuff they were selling. And, and by the time, he's about three hours into the sale, he, while he was riding, he was nipping. And he was so drunk in about three hours of his sale, he's just wallering on his horse. I mean, like that, yeah. Well, this guy that come all the way from Oklahoma to this sale, because it was such a huge sale, he's a tall guy. I had met him at, at, well, I mean, I'd never seen him before, but uh, I'd seen him two or three times. At, you know, I was close to him when it was bidding or I was bidding or whatever. Anyway, uh, me, me and him just kind of enjoyed visiting with each other because I found out he was from Oklahoma and all that stuff. And he's probably, I, I was probably like uh, 45 and he's like uh, probably 50, something of that nature. Real tall guy. I'll never forget him. Slender, tall, tall man. And... Uh, Anyway, he come back by me and he said, have you noticed the guy on the horse? I said, yeah, that's a man that owns his property. He said, man, isn't it, isn't it so sad that, that the bottles got him down? And he was telling me that. And I said, yeah. I said, that's a, that's a bad way. He didn't, know, he didn't know I was a Christian or nothing. And so he said, you know, he said, I've, I've lived off of whiskey before. He said, I used to go from cow sale to cow sale. And he said, I'd stay there uh, till like one or two o'clock in the morning and then drank me, you know, a good lick of whiskey. And I'd go to the next sale and I'd be there the next morning sorting cattle. And I'd stay that night and I'd get on the whiskey and go to the next one. He said, we had, had four or five of them in the road. He said, man, he said, I like to kill myself drinking. I said, you know what? I said, I mean, he, he, I could tell that he had like, Whoa. I said, I got some stuff down there in my pickup I'd like to give you. And he's, he was like, oh, man. <laughs> so we took off down there from my pickup, and uh, I opened the door and slid that seat forward. And right there was a whole deal of Gideon Bibles. <laughs> so while I'm humped over, and he's right behind me, waiting for me to pull the jug out. I'm right behind me. I turned around over there. And those, in the front of those Gideon Bibles, it talks about drinking and drunkenness. I turned around there and pulled that Bible out and handed it to him. And he goes, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, right there at the auction. Can God use you? Can God use you? Can you be trusted with this gospel? Whoa. He reached down through there. I said, I want you to go down and look at that D word. He goes, whoa. <laughs> so I just took off, oh, man. I mean, in a little bit, here he comes. The, the, the sale is nearly, nearly over. And he comes back by and he said, I want to know where you come from, boy. I said, hey, I want to give you another one of those Bibles. And the guy that you rode down here that's your boss I said, I want you to give him one. He said, man, if I was to give him one, said he, he would go crazy. I said, no, he won't. I said, wait till he gets up to about seven and then just pitch it over there in his lap. I said, I guarantee you, he won't jump out. Oh, man, he's going nuts. I get home, he called me, he said, where did you come from? Friends, I think it's time for the world to look you over and say, where is the God you're living for? And he should be the miracle worker wherever you go that people should see Jesus in your life. Hallelujah. Why? Don't limit God. God can do anything. That guy talked to me several times way back up in Oklahoma, you know. I said, I'm just a common man. What you need to do is find the Jesus of that Bible I give you and follow him. I, I'm just believing to see him in heaven. I guarantee you he'll never forget the cell he come to at Snyder, Texas. As I never seen him since then. Not my eyes on him, but I'm looking for him over yonder. I had one of the sweetest calls just the other day. Uh, a, a boy that I went to school with, as tough as a boot. I mean, and all, all kinds of stuff. He called me and said, I'm going to church in Sherman, Texas. I was so proud of him, an Assemblies of God church. I went to church with him when he was a little feller, and his dad was an alcoholic, and he had all kinds of trouble. I thought, whoa, Lord, thank you. He, lives, he lived just a mile uh, uh, south of me, down on the Roby Highway from where, from where we lived. And to find out that he's found the Lord, I said, God, you can do anything. You can do anything. I said, what about your brother and your sisters? He said, they're not saying this. man. Let's believe God for him. He said, would you pray for him right now? So we started praying for Russell and Davina and Sabrina. He said, whoa! Why? God can do anything. Friends, we, we should say, God, help me get my sack plumb full before I go over yonder. Jesus talks about the weeping in may the weeping may endure for the night. Guess what? Joy comes in the morning. You know what the joy is? Bringing your sheaves 
with you. To know that I get to lay at the feet of Jesus. Some people are born again. Friends, this is no time to just barely, barely be dog paddling and getting you a little air every once in a while. Where is the miraculous, glorious power that made a virgin have a baby? Where is the holiness of Jesus Christ that changes people's lives in 2022? And where are those people that belong to this kingdom that God promised? It's a kingdom that has no end. In Luke chapter 17, and I'm closing with this. You didn't think I was going to close, did you? Verse 20 and 21. Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Are we just going to look around and say, well, I just hope Jesus fills his church up. No, that's not right. Neither shall they say, lo, he's here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is where? The kingdom of God is within you. Friends, there ain't no need of us ducking no more. You know too much about this gospel to bow out. How do you know that the Lord didn't put you here in 2022 just for such a time yes. Amen. as this? Don't limit the God you're serving. Your rankest friend can be touched by God. Yeah, he's amazing. These altars are open. Would you like to come tonight and say, God, I'm taking the limits off of you this evening. Woo, somebody may get saved on the way to work in the morning. Whoa! I may get to bring somebody to Wednesday night Bible study. Hey! What about Sunday morning? And woo! My God can do anything. Huh, would you come? Maybe some of y'all come sing just a little bit. My God can do anything, anything. He made this earth in all its fullness and all that time shall bring. My God can do anything. Thank you for coming and praying.